Hi there. Today, I want to introduce you to the concept of least common multiple. On the GMAT or in a lot of other math contexts, least common multiple is a very important concept that underlies others and really helps you relate numbers to each other. So, by way of background, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a GMAT prep website called gmathacks.com, and you can check out hundreds of free articles there on GMAT and math in general. And also, you can check out my math textbook, GMAT, Total GMAT Math. So, on least common multiple, the idea is we're going to take two numbers and find the smallest possible number, the least number, that is a multiple that is divisible by both of those numbers. So, let's take, for instance, 12 and 18. Now, there's a very simple way we can do something with numbers like 12 and 18, and this is the most basic, um, the least complicated way of doing least common multiple. What we can do is just make a list of all the multiples of those two numbers until we find one in common. So with 12 and 18, 12, multiply that by 2, you get 24, multiply 12 by 3, you get 36, multiply 12 by 4, you get 48, 18, multiply it by 2, you get 36, and we can stop there. 36 shows up on both lists. That means that the least common multiple of 12 and 18 is 36. In this case, and in a lot of other cases, it isn't the product of the two numbers. That's the most common mistake people make. If you need a, a common multiple, forgetting for a second the word least, the easiest thing to do is just multiply 12 times 18. When you multiply 12 times 18, whatever number you end up with, it's going to be a multiple of 12 and a multiple of 18. It'll be divisible by both numbers. But the question is, is it the least common multiple? And in a case like this, where 12 and 18 have some common factors, it's not the case. So we need to resort to some other tactic to identify what that smallest possible number is that's divisible by both 12 and 18. Now, as you can probably guess, not every pair of numbers is as easy as 12 and 18. So we're gonna need something a little more systematic, a little more reliable than simply making a couple lists of numbers. So keeping with 12 and 18 for a minute, I'm gonna show you that more systematic, reliable approach. So what we're going to do is take both numbers and come up with their prime factorizations. In a previous video, I walked you through how to do a prime factorization. If you're not familiar with that technique, I strongly recommend you learn how. You can go back and check out that video. But for the time being, we can say that 12 is equal to 2 squared times 3, and 18 is equal to 2 times 3 squared. So, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to add a little exponent of 1. So, 3 is the same as 3 to the first power. It's just handy, as we'll see in a moment, to have the exponents there, even if they're a little redundant. So, to find least common multiple, we start by getting the prime factorizations. Then, the least common multiple will consist of all the prime factors that are present in either number. So, 12 has some 2s, and it has some threes. 18 has some twos, which are already represented, and 18 has some threes, which are already represented. The complicated step here is picking the exponent. So we know there's at least one two in the least common multiple. So what we do, we look at the prime factorization of 12 and the prime factorization of 18 and take the largest number of twos in either number. So there are two twos in 12, one two in 18, so 12 has more 2's. There are two 2's. So we're going to put a 2 right here. Notice we're only picking the bigger number. We're not combining them. We're not multiplying them. We're just taking the bigger exponent. And then for 3, same thing. Here we've got 1 3. Here we've got 2 3's. We take the 2 3's, since that's the bigger number. Put that here. 2 squared times 3 squared. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. And we have 36 should look familiar. That's what we got in the more rough and tumble, guess and check kind of way that we started with. This approach, starting with the prime factorizations, combining the prime factorizations using the method I just showed you, that works for any set of numbers. The only downside is that for larger, more complicated numbers, it takes some time. But if you're preparing for the GMAT, remember that the people who write the GMAT, 
they know you only have two, maybe two and a half minutes per question. They're not going to give you the least common multiple of 4,922 and 1,377. They know that's not practical. That's not what the test is trying to determine whether you can do. So 12 and 18 might be a slightly simplistic example, but it's not the most simplistic possible example. It's closer to a realistic example than my 5,000 and something and 1,000 and something. So just a couple of other examples I want to show you in some special cases. Now, I would encourage you after this video is over to just come up with some sample numbers in the range between about 20 and 100 and follow that process I just walked through. Prime factorizations, combining with prime factorizations, coming up with, with the least common multiple. My book, Total GMAT Math, has a page of practice on that if you want to check that out. But there's a couple situations that are somewhat unique that you should be exposed to. The first one, let's say you've got something like the least common multiple of 12 and 36. Now what you might notice is that 36 is divisible by 12. Done deal. Now what some people do, mistakenly, is they'll start making those lists. They'll go 12, 24, 36, 48, and so on, 36, 72, and so on, and they'll ignore the 36 right here. Now 36, as you can tell, shows up in 12's list. 36 is divisible by 12. But the common mistake that people make is they look at the 72, see that 72 is divisible by 12, and ignore the fact that 36 itself is divisible by 12. So if you're coming up with the least common multiple of two numbers where one is divisible by the other, that's your least common multiple. You don't need to go any bigger. If 36 is divisible by 12, 36 itself is the least common multiple of 36 and 12. 36 times 1 is a valid multiple of 36. That's a mistake that seems like everybody has to make once, but hopefully I can help you work through that, um, that trap a little faster. The other special case I want to show you is when both of the numbers are prime or they have no prime factors in common. So let's try the least common multiple of 14 and 15. 14 is 2 times 7, 15 is 3 times 5. Now in the terms that I was using before with prime factorizations, all of these have exponents of 1. So there's nothing to combine. There's nothing to compare. Remember with 12 and 18, I was comparing 2 squared and 2 to the first, 3 squared and 3 to the first. So in a sense, those two numbers had a lot in common. They had a very tight relationship. So the least common multiple of 12 and 18 wasn't much bigger than 12 or 18. Whereas here, there's nothing in common. 2 and 7, 3 and 5. So if we're building a least common multiple in the method that I showed you before, we've got a 2, we've got a 3, we've got a 5, and we've got a 7. The end result is a very big number. It's a lot bigger than either 14 or 15. And what it ends up being is the product between 14 and 15. So in this case, all those steps were really just double checking that 14 and 15 have nothing in common. So the lesson to draw from this example is if the two numbers have no prime factors in common, like 14 and 15, the least common multiple is simply the product. So in a case like 14 and 15 where you might know without even doing the prime factorizations that there's no prime factors in common, you can just multiply them together and you're done. End of story. So there's a few different situations we've gone over here. The main one I want you to focus on is the actual process that we've walked through because no matter what the numbers are, no matter whether it's a special case or not, you can use this method, even if it's a little slower, and it'll get you to the right answer. After enough time doing that, you'll get very quick with prime factorizations, you'll really internalize the method, and you'll have a better sense of how these numbers relate to one another. And that's really what the GMAT is after. So for more tips on properties of numbers, GMAT math in general, the GMAT in general, I encourage you to go to my book, Total GMAT Math, or to my website, gmathacks.com, and check out my videos, the ones I've already recorded, and the ones I will be recording in the future. Thanks for watching.